Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. So I'm out here planting my early spring crops, things that can take a little bit of cold weather and frost. And got me thinking about the kind of places that I grow my plants, which is raised beds. Raised beds become very popular in the last few years. And it got me thinking about why. So this raised bed here that I'm gardening in is made of fabric. And it's an easy solution for space such as the one I'm at right now, where you might have gravel or concrete or some other kind of hard surface that prevents you from growing in the ground. It just gives you somewhere to grow your veggies and get things planted. I'm gonna put in a little bit of radish here. French breakfast, 28 days. Now, some of us like to garden in raised beds because it brings the garden up to us and it makes it easier so we're not always bent down, kneeling on our knees and having to get back down off the, off the earth again. So I like this raised bed that I built a few years ago to grow my carrots in. And I'm gonna put a few onions in this year as well. So let's see. I'm going to be putting into some of these knots to shawl. Little finger. Adelaide. Baby spike. And Paris market. Superstar white onions will be very happy between the carrot rows. Having even just a short raised bed like this one that's only about 30 centimeters or so off the ground sure makes it a lot more comfortable when I'm out here working and weeding and planting. But that's not the reason I put in raised beds. Nope. The reason I put in raised beds is because I can be working in this rich, fluffy, usable soil much sooner than I used to be able to. You see, my native soil here is thick, sludgy clay. And I spent years in this garden, gardening in the ground, trying to uh, fight with that clay, trying to amend that clay, and trying to get things to grow well. And they did, they grew very well. Clay is full of great nutrients. It's very rich and great pure plants, lots of minerals in it. 
but it takes a long time to drain. It takes a long time to get the moisture off enough so you can move in it and walk in it. And it, when it dries out in our droughty summers, the water can just run right off of it. So it has trouble draining the water out when it gets soaked and waterlogged, and it has trouble absorbing the water when it gets dried right out. And that can make it difficult to work with as a gardener. I'm just planting some homesteader peas here in this row. Right now it's the 27th of April, and here in Saskatchewan, Canada, our uh, average loss frost date down in my southern part of the province isn't for about three to four more weeks yet. And a lot of gardeners won't be able to be out gardening until close to that frost-free time. Not because of the frost-free weather. It's a lot of things like the seeds that I'm sowing right now that can be planted now, but because they can't get into the gardens yet. And for me, with 110 frost-free days, and seasons that can change really quickly, that just doesn't work. As soon as we get a little bit of nice weather and it's warm enough to be out planting, I want to be able to walk out in my garden and put some seeds down in the ground and get my garden started. I don't want to be waiting because the soil is not ready and I can't work in it when the weather is ready to cooperate with me. And that's why I garden and raise beds. If you're gonna put things in early, you might wanna put in a few extra seeds just to make sure that they don't rot away. And I wouldn't soak things like peas before you put them in the ground. You don't want wet peas in cold soil. But when the soil's like this, if you can get in your garden, you can be planting in your garden. And that's what I'm doing today. So just because I garden and raise beds to avoid having to wait to get my seeds in the, the heavy clay, doesn't mean that I'm not still finding myself in mucky, wet situations out of my yard this time of year. We've had snow and rain every week all month long and we've had several feet of snow melting before that so my yard is pretty muddy and full of puddles and when I walk the dog lots of mud and puddles so you may have noticed I've been wearing these grubs boots and trying them out in my garden and I've been enjoying them they sent them to me for free so there is that they're not paying me to sponsor them or anything but I've been wearing them around the yard the last while, and I'll tell you, they're really comfortable, and they're waterproof. They have good grips on them, and yet they're still workable enough. I've walked the dog in them on concrete, and my feet have been comfortable when I get home. And they work to, to keep my feet warm and dry out here, even when I'm in uh, puddles from melting snow or walking through snow banks. They've kept my feet nice and dry, nice and warm. So thanks Grubs for uh, giving me these boots to try out as you work your way into the Canadian market here and I'll leave a link down below if you want to check out their boots but uh, while you're doing that I'm going to keep planting my cool weather veg, get some parsnips and some beets in the ground and finish up these peas. Thanks for watching we'll see you next time. Bye.